the Bessie K-Body Revo panel clap. Four ways to configure them to do different things and the four accessories for these that I love having in my workshop. So let's get started. Hola woodworkers, Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. What do I like about the Bessie clamps? I like the way you can make the heads move and I like the amount of pressure you can apply, particularly if you have the newer ones, the ability to put an Allen wrench inside the handle and get even more pressure. I like the clips that they provide to keep your uh, work pieces off of your clamps and to keep the clamp, the glue off of your clamps. I like the end pieces with the holes in them that would allow you to clamp it to a work surface so that it won't move. I love the fact that these are glue resistant and can be cleaned easily. I like the way the gear mechanism works. Uh, I like the way that they've designed them so that you can take these heads off and put them in any of four configurations for different applications. I like the accessory tool allowing you to push down the middle of a panel uh, so it won't bow up. I like the <clears throat> angular tools that are available so you can put those on the inside of the clamps and uh, handle something that's not 90 degrees. And I like the fact that you can get an extension piece and allow you to take two clamps and put them together and uh, almost get twice the length. So that way you can buy a lot of 31 inch clamps, but when you need them to be 56 inches, uh, they can do that with this little extender. They slide easily once you figure them out and the figure them out part is to turn them counterclockwise as far as you can to get this break inside it there. Now you've got the most flexibility here. If you want to widen them, pull the handle up. In other words, if you want to make this wider at the mouth, then make this wider between the handle and the bar by pulling it up and that moves very, very easily. Alright, secondly, if you want to make this more narrow, then make this more narrow by pushing down on the handle and it'll move good the other way. Some other things I like about these before I get into the different configurations, it's very nice to have these little clips that go on the bar that then allow you to put your workpiece on top of those clips, keep them off of the bar in case uh, there's anything on the bar that would stain your really nice workpiece. So these are 90 degree clamps with about three and three quarters spread here. These are resistant to glue. End piece has a hole in it which you could use these kinds of clamps and secure the bar where you want it your tabletop. So you could secure it here and secure it here and then your clamp won't move around on you. So that's a nice feature. The first and primary configuration is just with the two jaws facing each other and maybe with these clips on here. Clamps, by the way, can hold up to 2200 pounds of pressure. Clamping pressure, normally about 1700. But the, an additional thing that's good for those of us who have maybe weaker hands because of arthritis or something is you can put an Allen wrench inside the handle and get yourself more leverage. A nice feature about these is there's enough room on the bottom and on the sides to actually use them that way if you want to. So let's suppose that I wanted these but if I did them like this 
um, from the top then maybe I've got this handle down on my workpiece and it's hard for me to turn it. Well, I don't have to do it that way. I can, I can do it this way and there's enough leverage down there to do it. If that's not the way I want it, I can do it sideways. These are really well designed to give you a lot of flexibility just in the first configuration. Let's go to configuration number two, which is the spreader. To do that, you take this end piece here, easily removable by pressing with your two thumbs and take that clip out. Then you can pull this up, pull the head off, and let's say now I want the head to face this way, the opposite. So I just turn it, flip it 180 degrees. It can be a little frustrating to get these back on. But now I've done it, and then I can use that as a spreader. In other words, if I wanted to push or spread something out, I could do that. Configuration number three is using two of these heads on one bar. When would we want to do that? Suppose I've got a really long set of Bessie panel clamps, like 50 inches. And when you put them on something uh, like this, they, the bar might hang out so far because I got 50 inches, but I only need maybe, uh, what I got, 18 inches here. Then if I have two or three of those, it gets really heavy and it tips. So the solution for that is to use two of the heads on that really long bar to face each other. And now this is going to be balanced because I got some bar this way and some bar sticking out this way. So that's a solution for using your super long uh, panel clamps, but in an application where you want to balance that bar on both sides of the workpiece. The next configuration is what I call the bridge. So let me uh, fast forward and you can watch me set up the bridge and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Here's the application for the fourth configuration. This is too wide for the clamps that I have, 24 inch clamps. I need something longer. So what I do is take two of these and I take this head off and I flip it over. So it's now going the opposite direction from the tail. So this clamping head is now going down, the tail is going up. I have another one over here where the clamping head is going down, the tail is going up. Just take a third one in the normal configuration and bridge those and then start tightening things up everywhere. You can either do them like this or you could do them like this and uh, that's the way you make some shorter clamps into a larger clamp. Here's my first accessory. So I've got a, a panel in my parallel bar clamps here. I've got some bar clamps on the bottom to hold it and it's on those little divide on those little separators and then I've got it clamped from the top but what I'm worried about is this seam bulging up as I tighten down those clamps so what you can do is have this little supplemental clamp that you put on the bar and then you can turn it and push down on the seam and hold that in place you know, so that's as opposed to putting uh, a clamp on the end of some sort, which is, works as well. But these are handy little devices. Now the next accessory that can be very, very handy is a little thing that goes over the head and the tail. When you take off this protective sheet, then this has got little hooks on it to go right over where the protective sheet was. You can get that on there, put one down on one, take the sheaf off the other end, have that, and then 
The beauty of that is if I had some sort of a triangular piece, and I'll simulate that just by putting this at an angle. So how am I going to clamp that up if I had a piece, some sort of unusual piece? Well, now I can put it between these angular clamps and then tighten it up and you get pressure all along the edge of these two clamps pushing maybe I had a triangle leg for a chair or something and I want to get some things put together on the joints. So these are very very handy for handling glue ups with things that involve angles. My next one has got two slots that are deeper in one direction and then in the other direction they don't go as deep. This is designed exactly for my Bessie clamps. I can use the deep channel on there. They come as a set of four. I can put another one in the deep channel. Do the same thing here with the deep channel. And the fourth one. I then take my two more clamps and I'm going to put those in the shallow channel. Then I get a fourth one, put that across in the shallow channel. It can help me set up at 90 degrees. So then if I have some sort of a box be held in place for me, start pushing together and tightening down and get everything really nice and squared up. So these are very nice accessories for my Bessie clamps. The one final accessory I'm going to show you is probably the best of all of them and that's an extender. Not by doing the bridging technique because that was a little cumbersome frankly but actually using something that's designed specifically to make your shorter clamps into longer clamps. If your clamps aren't long enough, you can get this uh, auxiliary device, which is a connector. I take the head off of my clamp and I reverse it. I like to have them be totally opposite here, gives me more distance. So I, rever I set this up in this configuration, put this connector on the middle, do the same thing over here on this end. And I lose three inches compared to using them by themselves. So my 31 becomes 28. So 28 and 28 is uh, 56. Now, if that's not long enough, then throw one of your 50 inches on there and uh, extend it further or put together two 50 inches. It, it's uh, hard for me to imagine a workpiece that I'm doing that would be that large. But I tell you what, I love these things. They give me so much flexibility. Yeah, I've got lots of other clamps. Um, well, I guess I'm not going to change the camera angle, but yeah, I got a lot of other clamps up there. I got a lot of uh, these clamps down below. So uh, I think maybe I'm, I'm one work, woodworker who might have too many clamps. <laughs> I hope you found that helpful. Maybe you learned some new things about your Bessie clamps that you already own that you weren't aware of and uh, if you found anything at all of value in this video I'd, I'd appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber give me a like that's always very much appreciated comments are very much appreciated stay tuned for the next video I'd like to give a shout out to three April Fools uh, videos that I thought were very entertaining <laughs> One was Paul Sellers <laughs> announcing what his new videos are going to look like. Uh, <laughs> that was funny. It was subtle, but very funny. So go check out uh, Paul Sellers' new trailer uh, for his channel. Uh, another one was Jonathan Katz Moses, who uh, was talking about the uh, best joint in woodworking, the butt, the butt joint, and then. Of course, the guy who does the absolute best April Fool's videos, uh, and he's done three of them three years in a row, is Next Level Carpenter, Matt Jackson. Uh, if you haven't seen his one where he uh, 
uses an app on the phone from two years ago to replicate himself so he can get more work done. That was terrific. But then he followed up with the board stretcher and that from Duh Walt. That was that was so funny. I mean, it was unbelievable. And then this year he's come up with another set of tools from Duh Walt. I, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but go over and check the uh, Next Level Carpentry uh, channel, Matt Jackson, and check out the, the, his video. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.